हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू अनदर वीडियो ऑन योर चैनल लोपीडिया सो आज के हम अपने इस वीडियो में समझेंगे आर्टिकल 13 सम ऑफ द इंपॉर्टेंट डॉक्ट्रिन्स एंड इट्स बेसिक कॉन्सेप्ट्स नाउ व्हाट ऑल यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो दैट वी बी डिस्कसिंग द बेसिक स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ आर्टिकल 13 द इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ द आर्टिकल द डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ सेवरेबिलिटी डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ इक्लिप्स एंड डॉक्ट्रिन ऑफ वेवर now let's quickly start on with your article 13 so your article 13 deals with laws inconsistent with or in derogation of the fundamental rights so this is what the heading of article 13 is all about broadly java article padenge you will realize there are four clauses in the article and we'll be comprehensively covering all of them except your clause 4 which we'll be taking up in another video. So for this slide, we'll be focusing on clause 1 and 2. So clause 1 basically talks about that all laws in force immediately before the commencement of this constitution insofar as they are inconsistent with the provisions of this part. So when I'm saying this part, what do I mean? I mean fundamental rights shall to the extent of such inconsistency be void. So, jab aap apna clause 1 padhenge, aapko ye samajh aayega, it basically talks about all the pre-constitutional laws which were in force immediately before the commencement of the constitution and now, jab aapari constitution aai hai, we have realized that they are inconsistent with the fundamental rights. Means, they violate any of the provisions of the fundamental rights or they are holistically inconsistent with fundamental rights altogether. So, us inconsistency ki extent tak, wo law aapka void ho jayega. So, now let's move on to clause 2. Clause 2 says that the state shall not make any law which takes away or abridges the right conferred by this part and any law made in contravention of this clause shall to the extent of such contravention be void. So, nahi to state koi aisa law banayega jo aapki fundamental rights ko abridge karta hai ya uske against hai also अगर स्टेट कोई भी ऐसा लॉ बनाता है व्हिच टेक्स अवे और अब्रिजेस द राइट्स कॉन्फर्ड इन योर फंडामेंटल राइट्स चैप्टर ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन टू द एक्सटेंड जो भी कॉन्ट्रवेंशन होगी वो वॉइड होगा सो नाउ यू कैन सी ओवर हियर क्लॉज 1 टॉक्स अबाउट प्री कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन लॉज जैसा कि अभी हमने डिस्कस किया था ऑल द प्री कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन लॉज व्हिच वर इन फोर्स बिफोर द कमेंसमेंट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन बट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन के आने के बाद दे आर समवॉट इनकंसिस्टेंट विद द फंडामेंटल राइट चैप्टर विल बी वॉइड सो आपको इस केस में क्या रिमेंबर करना है कि लॉज आर नॉट स्टिल बोर्न व्हाट डू आई मीन बाय दैट लॉज जब बनाए गए थे दे वर नॉट वॉइड Laws were very much valid before the commencement of the constitution and very much all the rights and duties arising from the laws were imposed on the citizens. However, after the commencement of the constitution, they became inconsistent with the fundamental rights. That's why to the extent of such inconsistency, they became void. So, jab humne formulate ke the, they were not stillborn, but they became so because of the inconsistency with the fundamental rights. अब आपका clause 2, as I have already mentioned, किसके बारे में बात करता है? Post-constitution laws. So, this particular clause says that after the commencement of the constitution, state कोई भी ऐसा law नहीं बनाएगा, which is in contravention of your fundamental rights chapter. And कोई भी अगर ऐसा law बनता है, so to the extent of such contravention, it will be void. Now, what's important for you to remember is, Laws in this particular case are dead from the beginning. Now, what do I mean by that? So, agar koi bhi state aisa law banata hai, which is in contravention of the fundamental rights, it will be void from the beginning itself. Unlike clause 1, jab humne after commencement of the constitution dekha hai ki wo void bante hai. In clause 2, 
any law formulated will be void, will be dead from the beginning itself. So I hope आपको ये particular two clauses absolutely clear हैं while we are discussing your article thirteen. Now अब आपका clause three explain करता है what is law and law in force because clause one and two talk about law and law in force. So इसको define करने के लिए we have our clause three. So what does clause three states? It states that law will include ordinances, order, bylaws, rule, regulation, notification, custom, or usage having in territory of India the force of law. So जब आप अपना term law use कर रहे हैं, that means when we are stating the state shall not make any law, what does the component law includes broadly? These terms. And when we using law in force, आपका clause one में it includes law passed or made by a legislature or other competent authority in the territory of India before the commencement of this constitution and not previously repealed, notwithstanding that any such law or any part thereof may not be then in operation either at all or in particular areas. So basically, आपका three Clause defines what is law and what is law in force. Now let's quickly read your clause four, which was inserted by the Constitution's Twenty Fourth Amendment Act, nineteen seventy one. Basically states that nothing in this article shall apply to any amendment of this Constitution made under Article three sixty eight. This constitutional amendment portion we'll be taking up in another video with all the relevant case laws. So now let us understand the first doctrine and uske kuch basic cases. So now comes the doctrine of eclipse. So basically, doctrine of eclipse kya kehta hai? Doctrine of eclipse states that pre-constitutional law, inconsistent with fundamental right, is not wiped out altogether, as it continues to exist with respect to the rights and liabilities accrued before the date of constitution. So, ये बात करता है आपके प्री कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल लॉस के अगर कोई ऐसा प्री कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल लॉ है विच बिकम्स इनकन्सिस्टेंट विद दंडामेंटल राइट आफ्टर दमेंसमेंट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन वो जो लॉ होगा इट विल बी इन अ डोमेंट कंडीशन इट विल नॉट बी डेड सो वाई डू आई से डोमेंट कंडीशन एंड वाई डू आई नॉट रेफर टू इट एज डेड बिकॉज द लॉ वुड बी रिकॉर्डेड एज हैविंग बीन एक्लिप्स फॉर द टाइम बींग इन फोर्स बाई द रेलिवेंट फंडामेंटल राइट एंड अगर हम उस पर्टिकुलर फंडामेंटल राइट को जिससे हमारा लॉ इनकन्सिस्टेंट होता है अमेंड कर देते हैं दैट मीन्स वी रिमूव द शेडो एंड वी मेक द एक्ट फ्री फ्रॉम ऑल द ब्लेमिश देन अगेन इट विल बिकम वैलिड एंड वेरी मच ऑपरेटिव एंड Essentially, it applies only to pre-constitutional laws stated in your Article Thirteen, Clause One. Why? Because I have already explained to you that the any post-constitutional law infringing fundamental rights chapter will be void from its very inception. So, जब it is void from its very beginning, how will it revive? So, there is no concept of doctrine of eclipse when I am talking about post-constitutional laws. नाउ इसमें आपका एक इम्पॉर्टेंट केस है बीकाजी वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ मध्य प्रदेश सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस द प्रोविजन ऑफ मोटर व्हीकल्स अमेंडमेंट एक्ट 1947 जो कि ऑथराइज करता था स्टेट गवर्नमेंट को टू मेक अप द इंटायर मोटर ट्रांसपोर्ट बिजनेस इन द प्रोविंस टू द एक्सक्लूजन ऑफ मोटर ट्रांसपोर्ट ऑपरेटर्स so this particular provision do valid when enacted became void on the coming into force of the constitution in 1950 so ye provision pehle to valid tha creation of monopoly but however it became void on the coming of the constitution in 1950 as it violated article 191g of the constitution however In 1951, Clause Six of Article 19 was amended by the Constitution's First Amendment Act, so as to authorize the government to monopolize any business. So, जो हमारा First Amendment Act था, 
उसने रिमूव कर दी इनकन्सिस्टेंसी ऑफ द प्रीवियस एक्ट विच बिकेम वॉइड ऑन द कमेंसमेंट ऑफ द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन सिंस इट वायोलेटेड नाइनटीन वन जी सो आई होप आपको ये क्लियर हुआ कि जब कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन फोर्स में आया द एक्ट बिकेम वॉइड बिकॉज इट वॉज वायोलेटिंग नाइनटीन वन जी सो इट बिकेम वॉइड अंडर आर्टिकल थर्टीन क्लॉज वन हाउ एवर After the amendment, it was again revived. It was again reinforced. So, law merely eclipsed हुआ था for the time being by the fundamental right. And as soon as हमने उसकी inconsistency remove कर दी, the law begins to operate from the date of such removal. So, I hope आपको ये clear है. Now, another important case is your Deep Chand versus State of Uttar Pradesh. In this particular case, Supreme Court held that opposed constitutional law made under article 13 clause 2 which contravenes a fundamental right is nullity from its inception and is still born law so is particular case mein supreme court ne yahi kaha tha ki doctrine of eclipse aapki post constitutional law pe applicable nahi hogi because they are still born and they are nullity from their inception एंड अगर हम बाद में कोई कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट भी ला देते हैं उसको रिवाइव करने के लिए दिस विल नॉट बी वैलिड इट विल हैव टू बी री इनेक्टेड सो आई होप आपको ये दो बेसिक केसेस क्लियर हैं पर्टेनिंग टू योर डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ इक्लिप्स नाउ लेट अस मूव ऑन टू अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट सो नाउ वी कम टू अ नेक्स्ट डॉक्ट्रीन विच इज डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ सेवरेबिलिटी सो द फर्स्ट पॉइंट इज लॉ इज वॉइड ओनली टू द एक्सटेंट ऑफ सच इनकन्सिस्टेंसी और कॉन्जुवेंशन So, ये बात करता है आपकी डॉक्ट्रीन ऑफ सेवरेबिलिटी की दैट मीन्स जो पोर्शन आपका वैलिड है विद रिस्पेक्ट टू द फंडामेंटल राइट्स एंड जो पोर्शन आपका स्टैंड अलोन कर सकता है विल बी वेरी मच वैलिड एंड द इनवैलिड पोर्शन और द इनकन्सिस्टेंट पोर्शन और द पोर्शन दैट कॉन्ट्रीव्यूज योर फंडामेंटल राइट्स इज अगेंस्ट द चैप्टर ऑफ फंडामेंटल राइट्स विल बी रिमूव एंड द अदर remaining act will be applied as it is that means the part which is severable from the rest which is valid the rest may remain operative so i hope aapko ye particular doctrine clear hai jo bhi aapka law hoga wo utna hi invalid hoga jitna ki wo inconsistent hai with the portion of your fundamental rights and if your rest enactment of your rest of the law that has been enacted can stand alone and can be very much applied it will be held absolutely valid now let us broadly understand this particular doctrine with the help of some of your case laws isse aapko aur clear hoga first is your ak gopalan versus state of madras now is particular case mein challenge hua tha the provision of the preventive detention act 1950 jisko kaha gaya tha they were against some of the provisions of the fundamental rights supreme court said that the said act except the section 14 did not contravene any of your article of the chapter fundamental rights so court ne ye kaha the invalid portion can be very much separated or can be very much distinguished from the valid portion of the law so overall applicability of law will not be affected agar hum section 14 ko of the preventive detention act wo hata dete hain which is violative of the chapter of the fundamental rights aapka overall law will sustain is case mein court ne explain ki aapki doctrine of severability now next is state of bombay versus fn balsara so is particular case mein bhi court ne ye kaha ki no need to declare the whole act as void now this case deals with certain provisions of your bombay prohibition act 1949 and in this particular case court observed that the real question remains that whether what remains is so linked or bound with the part declared invalid that the remains cannot independently survive ye particular factor observe kiya tha aapka court ne state of bombay versus fn balsara mein मीन्स जो फैक्टर हमने एक्ट से डिलीट किया है या जो प्रोविजन आपने डिलीट किया है इन सो फार और सच इनकन्सिस्टेंसी और कॉन्ट्रीवेंशन टू योर फंडामेंटल राइट्स क्या वो इतना इम्पॉर्टेंट है कि आपका जो रिमेनिंग एक्ट है विल नॉट बी एबल टू स्टैंड विदाउट दैट और विल इट बी एबल टू बी एप्लीकेबल इवन विदाउट दैट तो अगर वो उसके बिना भी स्टैंड कर सकता है एंड इट कैन बी वेरी वैलिडली बी इन्फोर्सिएबल 
then you can very much apply your doctrine of severability and continue with your remaining portion of your act or law. And in this case, maybe court ne observed that some of the provisions of the act, which were invalid, the, did not affect or could not affect the validity of the act itself. Now, the next important case will be RMDC versus Union of India. Now, this particular case is very important ho jata hai when you are understanding doctrine of severability. इस केस में कोर्ट ने ब्रॉडली ऑब्जर्व किए कुछ इंपॉर्टेंट गाइडलाइंस जो आप फॉलो कर सकते हैं व्हेन यू आर सीइंग वेदर द इनवैलिड पोर्शन कैन बी सेपरेटेड फ्रॉम द वैलिड पोर्शन ऑफ एन एक्ट और नॉट कोर्ट ने कहा कि इफ आफ्टर द इनवैलिड प्रोविजन इज रिमूव्ड व्हाट रिमेंस कैन नॉट बी इनफोर्स्ड विदाउट मेकिंग मॉडिफिकेशंस और अल्टरेशंस देन द होल एक्ट और लॉ मस्ट बी स्ट्रक डाउन एज बीइंग इनवैलिड means if you remove the invalid portion from your act and the valid portion cannot sustain means the valid portion needs an amendment or needs a modification so aapka whole act becomes invalid and aapko isko reenact karna hoga secondly court ne ye kaha ki separability of the valid or invalid parts does not depend on whether the law is enacted in the same sections or different sections aisa nahi hai ki just because it's a different section you will say that we'll okay remove this particular section and we'll go ahead with the rest of the act no you will see what is the substance what is the aim what is the goal of the legislature while formulating that particular law and even if the are in a different section if removing that particular section crumbles the whole of the act or affects whole of your law then you cannot go ahead with your remaining portion basically up intention of legislature dekhing it behind the enactment and if it cannot be separated it will lead to invalidity of the whole act so i hope aapko doctrine of severability clear hai with respect to these important case laws so now aapki last important doctrine jo aapko understand karni hai will be your doctrine of waiver isme aata hai aapka ek important question that is can a person waive his fundamental rights so now isme humne observe kiye hain certain important case laws the first is your barshesh nath versus income tax commissioner so in this particular case petitioner ne challenge kiya ek settlement jo usne income tax commission ke sath ki thi because in the subsequent judgment of the supreme court the supreme court declared the act violative of article 14 of the constitution itself in spite of the said judgment apple in the settlement ke sath kuch time tak comply kiya but defaulted later on तो एपल एंड ने क्या कहा अथॉरिटीज को दैट सिंस दी सेड एक्ट वॉज ओनली डिक्लेयर बाय द सुप्रीम कोर्ट एज इट वॉज अल्ट्रा वायर्स द आर्टिकल फोर्टीन द सेटलमेंट डिड नॉट अप्लाई एपल एंड ने कहा कि जब आपने एक्ट ही डिक्लेयर कर दिया वायलेटिव ऑफ योर फंडामेंटल राइट इन योर सब्सिक्वेंट जजमेंट हाउ केन यू अप्लाई अ सेटलमेंट बेस्ड ऑन द सेम नाउ द कमिश्नर ऑफ इनकम टैक्स हाउ एवर सेट दैट द Settlement is valid and binding on the appellant and ask him to make good the arrears of the settlement. Is he going against the appellant approach the Supreme Court in your Bashesha Nath versus IT Commissioner? So, the question before the Supreme Court was whether the assessee could waive the breach of the fundamental right in the question. However, court ne ye observe kiya ki the doctrine of waiver cannot be introduced in our constitution. and the court said a citizen cannot get discriminated by telling the state you can discriminate or get convicted by waiving the protection given under article 20 or 21 court ne ye kaha ki if citizen only says that yes you can discriminate despite that the state or the constitution will not discriminate and court ne ye kaha that a person cannot give up or waive a breach of fundamental right that is indirectly conferred on him by this constitutional mandate that means individual cannot waive any of his fundamental rights and court ne is particular case mein reasoning bhi di the court said that a large majority of our people are economically poor educationally backward and politically not aware of their rights and in circumstances mein it is the duty of this court to protect their rights and they are not individually capable of waiving off their fundamental rights 
Thus, the basic jurisprudence or the basic rule up until now is the doctrine of waiver or estoppel is not applicable to your fundamental rights. However, this particular doctrine or this particular rule is changing. Usse pehle hum dekh lete hain humare do other important case laws which are Olga Telles case in which the court stated that there cannot be any estoppel against the fundamental rights. Is case mein basically kya hua tha? Ki pavement dwellers gave an undertaking that they would not claim any fundamental right to put up huts on the pavements and would not obstruct their demolition. Pavement dwellers ne basically ye kaha ki koi bhi wo apni fundamental rights impose nahi karenge aur agar unho ne huts bana di to uski demolition ko bhi nahi rokhenge in an undertaking. अब जब फाइनली उनकी ये हट्स डिमोलिश होने आई दे सेट दैट दे आर प्रोटेक्टेड अंडर आर्टिकल 21 हाउ आर यू डिमोलिशिंग आवर हट्स नाउ वन कंटेंशन वाज दैट दे कुड नॉट हैव रेज सच अ प्ली इन द व्यू ऑफ द प्रीवियस अंडरटेकिंग कोर्ट ने कहा कि फंडामेंटल राइट्स कैन नॉट बी वेव्ड एंड नो इंडिविजुअल कैन बार्ट अ फ्रीडम conferred by him in the constitution so pavement dwellers can very much take up the plea of article 21 even if they have given an undertaking before the fundamental rights could not be waived now the next case is narsing pal versus union of india इस पर्टिकुलर केस में भी ऐसा ही कुछ हुआ था द कैजुअल लेबरर विद इन द टेलीकॉम डिपार्टमेंट हैड वर्कड कंटिन्यूसली फॉर 10 इयर्स एंड दस दे हैड एक्वायर्ड अ टेंपरेरी स्टेटस इनको प्रोसिक्यूट किया गया फॉर क्रिमिनल ऑफेंस एंड दे वर अल्टीमेटली एक्विटेड हाउ एवर उनकी जो सर्विस थी दैट वॉज टर्मिनेटेड अब क्वेश्चन अराइज हुआ कि दे एक्सेप्टेड द टर्मिनेशन विथ सर्टन रिट्रेंचमेंट बेनिफिट्स सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने यह कहा कि सर्विस कुड नॉट हैव बीन टर्मिनेटेड विदाउट द डिपार्टमेंटल इंक्वायरी एंड विदाउट गिविंग दैम अ हियरिंग and unhone ye observe kiya acceptance of the retrenchment benefits did not mean surrender of all the constitutional rights accordingly their termination was struck down and supreme court reinstated their services basically court ne is case mein kaha there can be no estoppel against the exercise of fundamental rights means fundamental rights are supreme and there cannot be any waiver of the fundamental rights Lastly a very important interesting factor that you must know when you are reading doctrine of waiver will be a decision which is your right to privacy decision that was given by a supreme court that holds that an individual has control over the dissemination of material that is personal to him or her iska kya matlab hai iska matlab ye hai i have a very much valid control to decide what i want to share and what i do not want to share सो बेसिकली इस पर्टिकुलर केस में आपकी जस्टिस न रिमन पॉइंट आउट दैट प्राइवेसी इज ओनली विद रिगार्ड टू दोज डिटेल्स विच वन डज नॉट चूज टू पार्ट विद वंस दी डिटेल्स आर इन पब्लिक डोमेन रीपब्लिशिंग दैम के नॉट बी ऑब्जेक्टेड अगर कोई डिटेल्स ऐसी हैं विच आर ऑलरेडी इन दी पब्लिक डोमेन रीपब्लिशिंग दैम के नॉट बी ऑब्जेक्टेड and in such case one can certainly take the plea that a person has waived his fundamental right and cannot complain of the violation of privacy and is case mein yani ki aapki privacy judgment mein court has also elaborated that right to privacy includes decisional autonomy very important concept jab hum yahan pe fundamental rights ki waiver ki baat karte hain so isme court ne kaha hai this would include the right of a person to make an informed decision not to enforce his fundamental right and that means he can waive it now last we come down to a very important slide that is revise repeat and remember humne article 13 ko holistically cover kar liya hai is particular lecture ke through and is slide mein hum recall karenge what all we can remember from the same 13th clause 1 basically talks about jo bhi law enforce hoga in territory of india immediately before commencement of the constitution in so far will be inconsistent with the provision of the fundamental right chapter of your constitution shall to the extent of such inconsistency be void clause 2 basically baat karta hai आपके पोस्ट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल लॉज के बारे में जो कि ये कहता है कि स्टेट कोई भी ऐसा लॉ नहीं बनाएगा विच टेक्स अवे और अब्रिजेस योर फंडामेंटल राइट्स 
and any law made in contravention of this particular chapter of your fundamental rights will be to the extent of such contravention be void so pre constitutional post constitutional laws fir hum discuss ki apni important doctrines that is doctrine of eclipse doctrine of waiver and doctrine of severability and we also discussed the meaning of law and law in force jo ki aapke clause 1 and 2 mein stated hain now i hope this particular lecture was useful and you were able to understand all the doctrines and the basic concepts relating to your article 13 thank you so much for watching and for more such videos do click the subscribe button as i come up with new video every tuesday and every saturday so till then stay home stay safe and keep learning